Hey what's up I'm Nizio Cole and a few days ago I released my honest review for Life is Strange True Colors. Now that was a spoiler free review but I did say in that video that I was going to be making a video talking about all the spoilers so just a clarification. This video is going to be full of spoilers. Every spoiler in the game that you could possibly think of. So if you don't want to get spoiled don't watch this. This is your warning. Don't get mad at me. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about, and this isn't really in like a formal uh, manner or anything, I just have a bunch of notes that I wrote down. So the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, fractal effects, like the aura, emotional effects around people. Kind of reminded me a little bit about like, like Quantum Break. If you guys have ever seen that, I'll put something up on screen so you can see. I feel like if you could pick anyone from the first game, Steph was literally the perfect choice. Besides maybe Kate, but I think they did a really good job on that. I also can't wait for her DLC coming out in what, two days at this point. If you didn't know, there's a whole DLC around Steph. Uh, it's, I believe it's going to be a prequel DLC called Wavelengths. And that's coming out on September 30th. And I will be doing a review on that when that comes out. And about Gabe's death, I really did not, seriously did not expect Gabe's death at like at all. I heard something in the trailer about her like avenging a murder or something like that, but it I didn't put two and two together and I was like, oh yeah, they're gonna rescue Ethan and then everything everyone's gonna live happily ever after, right? Nope. I, I was I was very surprised when that happened. I thought maybe he'd get like injured or something like that. I didn't think he was just he was just gone. He would just disappeared. Just wow, I was it was crazy. It was like an actual shock to me. Which is one of the reasons why I really love going into games blind without watching really that much of the like promotional material. I feel like there's much more surprises and a lot of game companies like have started to like spoil a lot of the content of their game before it even comes out. I actually love the LARP. That was like one of my favorite parts of the game and I didn't think that I would like it that much when they were hinting at it in earlier episodes but I actually really enjoyed it because I didn't enjoy the D&D section in Life is Strange Before the Storm, but I actually liked this a lot. And it was crazy how, I think it was like maybe five minutes after I finished the game, and I'm like, oh, they foreshadowed it. Jed, when he was the, the king and then he turned into the evil guy at the end of the LARP, they foreshadowed it and I didn't even pick up on it. I didn't even realize that that was talking about the actual game and that Jed was like evil, like secretly evil in the, in the actual game, in the actual story which is crazy. I really like the my block text. I feel like they add a lot to the world. They make it feel a lot more lived in. And also the, the SMS. Anytime there was like any update to the SMS, even before the game started, I would like go in and read all the previous texts so I could like get a, a feel for like what's going on and like some of Alex's past. And I think that's like a really cool thing that developers add that I think is often overlooked or people just don't care. But I think it's really cool to, you know, it's like reading extra parts of the story that aren't explicitly said, but you can actually, you can read and you can infer things. And I think that's really cool. I love the uh, my block post of Ducky super gluing his hand to a <laughs> taxidermy animal. And uh, Ryan's like, this isn't Google. If you want to go to Google, you got to type in. And it seemed really realistic. I also found a few possible references to other games, like the Dust by Daylight, which I'm guessing is referring to Dead by Daylight, maybe. And then this laptop, let me know if, if any of you watch my other videos, uh, my Watch Dogs videos, then you'll know uh, Bloom is basically a company in Watch Dogs that creates this security system, kind of. And I'm thinking maybe this is a, a reference to that, maybe possibly, like the logo looks really similar to the one in Watch Dogs. Let me know what you think about that. I loved all the NPCs around the city. I feel like they added a lot to the believability of the world and it, they really made the world feel lived in. Like it didn't feel empty. The previous games didn't feel empty per se, but True Colors definitely did not feel empty. My favorite was the bald guy. He was just, he was, he was my favorite NPC like throughout the game. If you know what I'm talking about, I'll play this clip real quick. Cancel AAA membership. <laughs> Yikes. Not transfer, cancel. Representative. And also the shy guy and shy girl, I did end up getting together at the end of the game during the spring festival. I absolutely loved Valkyrie, the cat in the record store. At first when I was playing the game, I thought that that was my cat meowing. And then I realized like there's an actual cat in this. Like, I love that. Only, only, only issue is that Valkyrie didn't have a food or water bowl 
during the Spring Festival, and it was going on for quite a long time. So, Deck Nine, if you're watching this, please add a food and water bowl for for Valkyrie in the Spring Festival. I love the arcade games. Those were a really fun addition to the game. I like the foosball section with Steph. The mini games in this game, are, it's the first time I've ever actually wanted to play a mini game in another game. Most of the time they're they're pretty uninteresting, but I was actually playing the arcade game for quite a while and, and I didn't get a high score or anything, but um, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. I love the scene with Alex and Ryan where Ryan's like, you know, make eye contact with me and she can't make eye contact. I feel like that's something that I can really relate to. And it's cool that Deck Nine had the forethought to put it in, or maybe I just could be looking too deep into it, but I feel like that's something that I do a lot unintentionally. And for me, it just made Alex that much more believable. I honestly did not, it is another surprise is I didn't expect Jed to turn on Alex, like at all. Until I saw the gun, I was completely like, oh, maybe he's like actually showing her what's going on. Nope, nope, <laughs> never mind. She's gonna get thrown down a hole. So yeah, I was, that was one of the first times in a long time that a piece of media, whether it be TV show or movie or game has actually like surprised me with a twist like that. Like usually I'm like, okay, so this guy's gonna, he's definitely gonna turn evil, but I really did not expect it with Jed, like at all. It was a complete surprise. Also apparently Alex turned into Lara Croft during that fall, cause that definitely would have killed any normal person. I'm also wondering where he shot her and why did he fall? Slowing it down frame by frame doesn't make it make any more sense. I'm just gonna write it off as she has superpowers, so maybe she has super healing as well. A parallel that I found is that there's a dream kinda ish sequence in the fifth act of both the first game and the third game. And I think that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed that section. It was it was cool to learn about Alex's past and all that happened with her father before she was in foster care and really get to see the events that led to her being the way she is today. The last decision in this game, I feel like was less drastic than the first game because it's set up in the fourth act. So it's kind of like, you're kind of like half locked in whether you pick Ryan or Steph to give the rose to. And then at the end of the game, you can choose whether or not you want to stay in Haven. I chose Steph first and then I chose to stay in Haven because I think Haven would be a pretty cool place to live. Life is Strange released a video where they show the inspiration for Haven Springs and it's a, a town in Colorado and it looks really, really similar. To Haven Springs. Well, I guess Haven Springs looks similar to it since that's the inspiration for it. I, I would love to just like if you know later down the line. I, I don't know if they do this because they've already they've already done a ridiculous amount. Deck Nine has done and put in a crazy amount of work into this game. A DLC less than a month after the game released and a remaster in 2022. Can we just say like a round of applause for Deck Nine because that is insane and a few more things i loved pike i loved eleanor i feel like they were really genuine characters i loved the the speech that alex did to jed and then he just breaks down crying it was just really emotional and i feel like this is the first game where it's like there's a genuine good ending regardless of if you picked ryan or staff there's still a big decision but it's not like the whole town gets destroyed or, or this person dies and uh I think I'm really satisfied. I'm satisfied with this game and I can't wait for Wavelengths. Of course, I'm gonna be doing a video on that. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, you can talk about spoilers in the comments, but I mean, if you got this far, then you, you probably don't care about spoilers. But yeah, I'll have a discussion with you all in the comments about the game. What did you like? What didn't you like? And yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.